Hey, what's up guys? This is Free the Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial. And I just decided to make this Patreon exclusive Liquid Swirl lesson for free also for you guys here on YouTube. So you can just learn something cool. In this tutorial, I will talk about the project file that I share on my Patreon, but even without the file, I think by just watching this tutorial, you will understand like 90% of the technique, okay? So you can totally do this without the Patreon membership. And now let's just dive into the lesson, all right? And here it's um, Saturday morning in Germany and I just thought that I want to share these liquid swirl files with you. So I just uploaded these ones into my Patreon shop. They are for free included for you in case you are in the Knights tier, which I would suggest because this is the place where all my training is happening. So I guess I just want to break down um, quickly how you can use those files and then to get an effect like this one. I think it's just a very nice surface attraction effect. Even that I know that this one is a little bit suspicious. So yeah. Yeah, let's just jump to another example here. This one could be, for example, something like lipstick. Maybe you could even make it more whiskers so it is even more creamy. So let's just talk about these examples here. As I said, this one could be, for example, lipstick. And I would say when you do this for a lipstick product, then you could make your swirl just a bit more creamy and more dense. This one is maybe a bit more on the light side, more like a fluid simulation and not that whiskers, but you could easily change that for your client needs, okay? And I just think that it's a powerful technique that you should learn. So this is why, let me just see, I shared those files, as I said, in the Patreon shop as a um, download files all right and for example yeah you will find both examples here so for example you will find these ones the eye cream files and also you will find an example for the cream pot files okay so i would say let's just fire up for example this one here you will have the cinema 4d file all right so i would just open this one up inside you will get the high quality mesh okay and in the same position there should be this remesh version let me just see this one here and you can just export this one out as an fbx okay just select it go to fbx and then put this one into your liquid gen file i'm not sure if uh, let me just see okay it seems like that i also already did the fbx export for you okay so just uh, 20 seconds of work i additionally did for you you can also just use the fbx and then you can fire up this liquid gen file in liquid gen okay what a surprise so let me just do this one i will go as i said with the cream pot simulation but you can find the other example here with the eye cream simulation all right so let's just put this one into liquid gen so it seems that in my case the import container here is already connecting the correct fbx but inside here you would just click on the file path and then just use this fbx from cinema 4d just open it Okay, now you can see that the green pot is in position and then, I mean, you can study this file a little bit more, but let me just play this one. Let's just see what is already in the scene. Let's just see what is happening here. All right, so it seems like that, yeah, the attractor is kicking out these fluid particles and now you get a beautiful swirl around your product. It's a little bit on the slower side, but this is just because I already set this one up to quite a dense mesh, as you can see here, okay? And I also activated the high quality meshing. Without this one, you can see that it instantly runs at a double amount of speed. And now you can see, yeah, these beautiful swirls going around your product. And I mean, now it's just up to you to decide which frames you want to export out. So you can just, for example, let this run and then see okay, the animation is getting especially interesting from 1300 to 1600, for example. And then you could just go to your export container and set the first frame, okay? So for example, 400 or 1100, and then decide that you want from this point on, you want to see the next 400 frames. So this would mean from 400 to 800 in your timeline, okay? So yeah, then you just save this one out, <laughs> all right? And put the simulation, the Alembic file, then back into Cinema 4D. I think that in a bit more of a in-depth tutorial, I will break the setup here down for you. For now, you can study it, but you can see it's just a combination of an attraction force towards your product. So you can see that the imported 
product here, your eye cream, uh, your cream pot is working as a collision object, but also at the same time, it is connected into this force shape, which has a certain attraction towards the surface of your product, okay? And, and other than that, it's just a combination of two different turbulences. You can see that they have a certain animation speed and a certain scale for the noise to get different patterns. These will just help you to get more interesting uh, swirls and movements around your object because the attraction and the turbulence at the same time will give you these interesting swirly motions on the surface, okay? You can see that this one is set to a higher scale and this one is set to a lower scale, but this is really up to you. You should play with different settings here to just get different results, of course. And of course, those one in addition with the attraction strength here will be, I would say, the main parameters to change. For example, when you go lower with the attraction, let me just put this one to 2.5 then I think that the um, turbulence will be stronger and the fluid will get further away from your product. You can see, yes, that now the attraction is just not strong enough to hold these turbulence movements back from going into a further away orbit around your object. But when I look at this one, I would say that this one is also pretty amazing. At the same time, I think that, for example, here, I mean, this one is really wild. I think that the small scale noise here is maybe... Uh, a little bit too strong. So for example, I will set this one to 0 0.1 and maybe I will also set the scale higher so that hopefully you will not get too much of the small noise because I think it was just a little bit too turbulent. But yeah, let me just see this one again. Yeah, so I would say that this one, for example, feels already a little bit better. I mean, there are still a lot of details, but it's not that small scale. So I think that this one is better. And at the same time, of course, in addition to those parameters, you should think about the surface tension. Okay, so when I would go higher with this one, let's put this one to 30 instead of 18, then I think that the um, surface will just try to glue earlier together. There is more tension inside of the fluid body so that in general, most of the time you will get less of the little details because the fluid body will just try to have more tension inside of it and will stick more together so that you get, yeah, kind of a bigger shape and it's just making it a little bit more dense and gluing together. Okay, so yes, you can see this one is looking beautiful. At the same time, when you want to make it more whiskers, of course, now you could maybe, for example, go up with the sub steps. In general, when you go up with the sub steps, then the calculation will be just more precise, which will in the most cases lead to a more dense and less little detail splashy mesh. Okay, so, uh, but this is not always working. Okay, so you can try to go up here to, uh, yeah, make it feel more whiskers, but at the same time, you could also, if you want to really work with viscosity, you could activate the viscosity here, okay? So now there will be real viscosity simulated in your fluid, which will make it more creamy and more honey and really dense and gluing together. Okay, so this is what they introduced in the latest liquid gen option, liquid gen version, which I used, for example, in my honey simulations or the chocolate simulation, stuff like that. But when you activate this one, then um, you have to work with your viscosity parameter here. But for these simulations here, this one and this one, I actually didn't activate the viscosity parameter. So you can see it's more like liquid milk or something like that, but not exactly viscous like honey or something really creamy. But actually, it would be interesting now to try this. But when I would do this now working with viscosity, this will definitely change the whole simulation. And probably, let me just see this one. Probably this one will be a simulation that we should do in a separate tutorial because yes, now you can see that this is getting really dense. You don't have the splashy, milky movement anymore. So now this is really a dense blob and all your forces that worked previously pretty well with the milk simulation, let's just call it milk or something more light. Now they are just not strong enough because there is so much viscosity energy in your fluid. So you can see that when you work now with the viscosity, Viscosity. Uh, you could lower the viscosity, for example, here, go lower with these parameters, but I can already see that setting this one up now 
for something more dense, something with real viscosity, this would probably be a separate tutorial. But yeah, now you can see it's going around like a, like a glue, something really dense, all right? But this one could be also very interesting. So I think that I will do this one in a separate tutorial. But for now, I would say that you maybe just keep this one without the viscosity and try to keep it more, yeah, something more milky, something more fluid, just like we had it before. So let's not make this one too complicated. You can play a little bit around with the different forces and maybe with the surface tension. And um, you could also go more higher with the voxel size in case that this one is too heavy for your system. So I think that you could totally set this one to 1.5, for example. Let me just see this one. <laughs> yeah, so now this one is running way faster. Or even when your system is pretty on the weak side, you could also set this one to 0 0.02 and I think you will still get the decent simulation. So I think I just wanted to give you here a quick start into these files. And I mean, now let me just quickly show you in Cinema 4D, when you saved out now your Alembic file, you just go to File, Merge, and then this one is an Alembic file that I just saved out of my LiquidGen file. I think you should set this one to 100. So then you should have your Alembic file in your Cinema 4D file. And this is going crazy here, okay. So maybe it's best to uh, keep this one short. And we can talk about uh, making a beautiful part and details like that in another video. So uh, I hope you have fun with the liquid swirls. Thank you so much for your time. See you next time. Bye everyone.